Hey everyone, welcome back. So today we're going to cover a very practical subject, uh, which is how to choose a classical guitar. Um, if you're at all like me when I went to buy my first classical, uh, I had no idea what I was looking for. Uh, you know, I saw a room of guitars, some were shinier, some were different colors, uh, and some were very expensive, but I really didn't know what made them different. Um, so this video is in two parts. Today, part one is gonna be all about equipping you with what I think is sort of the need to know uh, before you show up to the guitar store to make a purchase. Now in part two, we're gonna talk about what to do when you actually have an instrument in your hands that you might be considering buying. How can you actually tell if this instrument is good quality or not? By the way, this video was made in collaboration with a really cool guitar shop in Germany called Sikas Guitars. Uh, and part two is actually already out and it's available on their channel. Uh, so if you go to the link in the description, you can watch that right now. But for now, here is part one of choosing a classical guitar. All right, now to start, let's just make sure we understand how to pick out a classical guitar from, you know, dozens of other types of guitars we might find at a guitar shop. A classical guitar is an acoustic guitar with nylon strings. And nylon strings are usually kind of a see-through, plasticky looking string material. You'll find the top three strings are nylon and the bottom three are wound with metal. If you see a guitar that's all steel strings, that's not a classical guitar. Um, other features include a headstock, which is this part here, with pegs on the back side. So not the front or sticking out the sides, but they're in the back. You can also tell it's a classical guitar because there are 12 frets, and at the 12th fret, the body starts. Uh, and then there are 19 frets uh, total, usually. Lastly, you can tell because at the bridge, which is this wooden piece here, the strings are tied around, not uh, held together with, with a pin. All right, so now that you know how to recognize a classical guitar when you see one, let's talk about price range. Um, it turns out that you can buy a classical guitar for as little as $80 on the internet, I'm sure, um, or as much as a quarter of a million dollars, <laughs> right? I have another video where I played a $275,000 Torres guitar, uh, which is actually, this is a replica of a Torres guitar, but I played a real one from 1888, uh, and because of its historical value, it's priced very high. Um, so that's a huge spectrum. How do, how do we know how much to spend? Um, well, of course, first is, you know, know how much you're able to spend, um, know what you can afford. But I would advise you not to buy the cheapest guitar if, if that's an option for you. Um, from my experience, guitars under $100 I wouldn't waste my time. They will simply hold you back in the learning process. You might quit because you think you're no good at the instrument, but in reality, uh, the instrument isn't very playable. So I would go over the $200 uh, mark, mainly because generally that's sort of the, the price range where you get into solid top instruments. This, this top uh, face of the instrument here is called the soundboard. And that is arguably the most important part of the instrument in terms of the sound it produces. Um, it's like a vibrating membrane um, that resonates and gives us so much of our the character of our instrument. And when you buy instruments that are too cheap, typically the top is made of a synthetic laminate wood that just doesn't sound so great. And what we want is a solid top, one solid piece of, of wood, uh, which you tend to get when you get over that price. Once you get over that hump, um, you get a lot of factory-made instruments, which are varying quality. And at a certain point, you enter into the realm of more professional-level guitars, which tend to be handmade, not factory-made. And that could be, you know, somewhere around the $2,000 range and up. Uh, these, these are made by a luthier, somebody, one person who makes the guitar from beginning to end. And those tend to be the finest, uh, most professional-level level instruments. But of course, there's a huge spectrum there and you can you need to buy what you can afford, but at the same time, generally, uh, the more you spend, 
the more playable of an instrument you get and the better, bigger of a sound you get as well. Next, you should know that guitars actually come in a variety of sizes. So this is about a full-size guitar, but if you are buying a guitar for a nine-year-old this tall, uh, this is too big. <laughs> um, they make half-size guitars. Uh, they make three-quarter-size guitars. So uh, you should get one that's appropriate for the size of the person. And also, you know, if you're an adult who's simply on the shorter side or you have small hands, they make seven-eighths size guitars. So it's very important to get something that's comfortable for you and not to force yourself to hold an instrument which is uncomfortable. A term you might hear if you go into a guitar shop is the scale length of a guitar. And that means the length from the saddle, which is this white piece here, all the way to the nut, which is the white piece here. And the average scale length in centimeters would be 65 centimeters. Uh, but actually this guitar is 64. So here we have a slightly smaller guitar. Um, some guitars you see are 66 centimeters. Uh, so there's a variety and I don't think one's better or worse necessarily, uh, as long as it's right for you. Now earlier I mentioned the importance of the soundboard uh, in that it should be a solid piece of wood, usually spruce or cedar. And so here we have the two main types of guitars. Um, the yellowish brighter color is spruce and it has a brighter sound. So easy to remember because the brighter color is the brighter sound. It's usually a harder wood. And then the darker color makes a darker sound. Um, it's not because of the color, but it's because the nature of the wood. But so the cedar is the darker color. It's a softer wood, which makes a more mellow, darker sound. And here's the cool thing. There's no objective answer here. I mean, this isn't better than this or vice versa. Uh, we're, we're into the realm now of, of taste. Uh, you get to decide, you know, which you like. But you should definitely play a cedar top and a spruce top guitar at some point and find out uh, which you prefer. Now, both these guitars are made by the same maker, Sears Guitars. And so, actually, if I just strum a chord on both, let's see if we can hear a difference. So starting with the spruce. And now the, the cedar guitar. I don't know how much of that is coming across on the microphone, but in person, the difference is night and day. Um, this is such a more mellow, dark, dark chocolatey sound, you know, and it feels different. Like I can feel the resonation of the instrument against my chest. Um, so they're very different instruments, but I wouldn't say one is better. The clarity of the spruce is beautiful and the chocolatey richness of the cedar is also beautiful in different ways. All right, another thing you need to know about classical guitars is that the wood on the sides and the back of the instrument, called the back and the sides, uh, it can be many different types of woods. Uh, here we have flame maple, and here we have Indian rosewood, right? Um, however, I have to admit that in my experience, the back and the sides is sort of a low priority wood of the instrument. Um, it doesn't seem to make as big of an impact as uh, other components of the instrument, especially not the soundboard. That seems to be the most important piece. Um, the back and the sides, sometimes you get also mahogany uh, or even exotic woods like Brazilian rosewood or koa. Um, but you know, like I said, I, I, I think it doesn't make a huge impact. In fact, Torres, uh, the famous maker who codified the shape of these instruments in the first place, this is actually a, a Torres replica here by Sayers Guitars. Um, Torres even did an experiment once where he made a fantastic guitar, but he used paper mache for the back and the sides, just to, th I think, prove a point, you know? <laughs> and so um, maybe it has a bigger impact than I, than I am aware of, but for me, I would at least say it's lower priority than, than the rest of the instrument. Another important point to consider is whether to buy a new or a used instrument. Uh, unlike cars, you know, guitars don't really depreciate in value. In fact, they can even appreciate in value if uh, the maker gets famous uh, or if there are none of those guitars left. <laughs> Sometimes with older instruments, you can get, you know, scratches and dings on the instrument, but those are very superficial. I would say that those don't really matter. Uh, what matters is if, if the instrument was taken care of, uh, if there are not, you know, cracks 
that were uh, too many cracks that were repaired in the instrument or serious problems like the strings are too high, the action's too high. Um, as long as the instrument was taken care of, there's nothing wrong with an old guitar. In fact, sometimes it's, it's wonderful because that important soundboard can actually improve in sound over time. As it's played, it can open up and learn to vibrate in new ways and like fine wine, improve in character uh, with age. So it's kind of a cool thing. Um, new guitars, however, the appeal there is, for example, if you go to a luthier, you can get a custom instrument exactly with the woods you want and the scale length you want and, and everything specified to your, to your liking. Okay, I have just one more point I want to make before you head to the guitar shop. <laughs> Be cautious to not fall into the trap of mistaking shiny and decorated guitars for quality guitars. Um, I remember when I was 16 or 17 and I was going in to buy my first more expensive classical guitar and I went to a guitar shop and I saw up high there was this super shiny guitar covered in mother of pearl inlays and decorations and things and we took it down and I could literally see my face in the finish of this guitar. It had so much finish on it. And I made the classic mistake of assuming that the decoration meant that this was actually a really good guitar. <laughs> It turns out that this guitar was not so great. Uh, the sound was really dead, um, but I really was taken by the beauty of the instrument. So be careful, don't make the same mistake I did. Um, in short, I would say that, in fact, we want less shiny guitars um, because we want to let the instrument resonate. That is your sound, resonation. And that's as I was saying before about the importance of the soundboard um, being like a, a membrane. Uh, if there's too much lacquer, if there's too much finish on an instrument, it suffocates the wood. There's a little experiment you can do to prove how important uh, it is that the soundboard vibrates. Uh, if I push on the top of the instrument, I can really deaden the sound, so... See how it mutes the sound? That's because the instrument needs to vibrate, and I'm suffocating it by pushing on it. And that's essentially what too much finish does. So if you see another guitar where you can see your face in it, it's too much like a mirror. Actually, I would say that's not a good thing. Um, the less finish, the better, in fact. And French polish tends to be the best way to finish, finish a guitar. So I really hope you found these tips useful and now you feel very equipped to head to the music store and ask all the right questions. <laughs> Uh, please do check out part two below in the description because when you get to the shop and you now have to play an instrument, uh, it's useful to know a series of tricks to figure out whether or not a guitar is good quality or not. Okay guys, thanks so much for watching. Please do subscribe and if you're interested at all in learning the guitar, the lute, or other plucked instruments, uh, please do check out my online music school called Arpeggiato. Uh, you'll find it in the description below at arpeggiato.com and we specialize in all things that go pluck. So if that's of interest to you and you'd like to do some online lessons, please do check it out. Okay, take care.